Citizens of planet Earth Don't get caught in the head <laughs> Disappointed. This reminds me of my students who get back to me with the degrees they don't like. <laughs> It's a very strange story. Uh, I wanted to study literature for a very long time, but um, my parents and my family convinced me that it would be better to study art sciences, so I did that for four years. Uh, but in the meanwhile, I'd been reading a lot of literature. Um, and then I actually wanted to do a master's at Basic University. But sadly, uh, my average was only 2.45. Uh, and you had to um, have at least 2.5 uh, in order to be able to go to master's. So my only kind of uh, option to do a master's in literature would, was to apply abroad. And so I looked at various different schools and I found this very strange program called Redlow School of English. I say strange, I mean, it's a, it's a wonderful program. Um, it only has uh, courses during the summer. So you go for five summers and you complete a, a master's degree in English. And the beauty of it was this, this sort of liberal uh, approach to education is that they didn't care that my undergraduate um, uh, average was 2.45. So that's how I applied. And it so happened, I mean, it gets even more complicated. This was an American program, but they had a campus in uh, Oxford. Um, the strange thing is, at the time, so this was 97, and I remember when first I went in 97, I remember there was only that program, uh, Master's American program at Oxford, and one other. And if you go now, probably every college in Oxford has one. Anyway, so I did that, and while I was doing the American program, I really, really liked the university, so I decided I'm going to actually apply to proper Oxford for the whole 
um, sort of masters. So after completing my American masters at, I mean, it was American University using the premises of, of Oxford, so I decided I'm going to apply to Oxford University proper. And that's how I applied, um, so that's the sort of long story. <laughs> It's a very beautiful campus um, and um, you get to meet very, very interesting people. Uh, the thing is that, I mean, you hear about how stressful Oxford University is. Um, I mean, I've, I've seen, I've watched documentaries about it as well uh, for undergraduate students because there's a very, um, so, I mean, you know, England's a very um, sort of class-driven society and some students find it very difficult to um, fit in um, as young sort of 18 year olds but um, and I guess again in, as an 18 year old you feel peer pressure much more than you would when you're in your 20s when you're doing your master's so I think a graduate experience at Oxford is very different from an undergraduate experience and as a graduate it was a beautiful beautiful experience I did my own courses but I was also able to attend other courses talks there's always something happening um, very important sort of academic figures, literary figures come and give talks um, and beautiful, there are beautiful bookshops that you can spend sort of a lot of time in and you know beautiful library. Um, the, the atmosphere really induces you to write and read and communicate with others and discuss things. I guess this is a question I should be able to answer as a comparative literature uh, lecture. We have very, very different tra traditions, I have to say, because, um, you know, when you um, speak about English literature, uh, one of the first names that comes to mind is Shakespeare, who was writing plays in the 1500s, and the play as a form um, is, is very, very late um, uh, in Turkish literature. Um, similarly, you know, Again, uh, English literature very well known for um, the novel. Again, a form that has come to Turkish literature uh, very, very late. So I guess if there's supposed, there, if there can be any uh, comparison, it would have to be um, through poetry. It's not something that I'm too familiar with, but I mean, um, maybe what we can talk about is. Um, whether there are similar characters uh, in Turkish and uh, English consciousness that tell us about the world. And here I will seek the help of Kali David, as I always do. Um, she has this comparison between Nasrit Dilmajan and Falstaff, uh, a Shakespearean character, as a very exuberant, uh, very lively, very much in touch with the public uh, and making jokes. As far as I've read, this is the only kind of valid comparison that I can think of uh, between the two literatures. Why not? <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, you can answer that in several different ways. I started studying Shakespeare in high school uh, in English. Um, in Beyoğlan Dosesi here in Istanbul. Um, so he's always been a favourite of mine and when I went to Oxford and I saw that uh, they were offering courses on Shakespeare, particularly one course that I took with the American program I was telling you about called Page and Stage. So I took this course called Page and Stage um, uh, with the American program that I was telling you about So and we watched 13, 13 plays in six weeks uh, in Oxford, Stratford, and London. The idea was we would read a Shakespeare play and then we would see it on stage and then talk about and write about the directorial um, decisions that have been made, how topical the plays were, and you know, uh, some of the plays are sometimes set in present day and sometimes they are set in different periods that are not the Shakespearean period, um, so try to understand why um, these decisions were being made. And um, it's very interesting uh, watching Shakespeare because, I mean, you read him on the page, 
you've been told all your life that he's great, and once you watch him on the stage as well, you think, yes, this is great. This, I mean, it's it's some one of these things that are really great, despite the fact that everybody says they're great. They really are great. So it's always a discovery to discover for yourself that you know the language is beautiful and. You know, like everybody says, um, you know, you see this on social media all the time. You know, all the kinds of English phrases that Shakespeare has given to the language. You know, we speak Shakespearean language without even realizing it, and it's very beautiful to try to find out, you know, how he has influenced uh, the English that we speak today. So, yeah, several several reasons. <laughs> I think I will give you the names of books that I recommend to people and that I've actually have given as presents. The book that I've given as present most um, is Regina Woolf's Three Guineas. I teach it as well, and it's not uh, it's not a novel. It's not a short story. It's a uh, an essay. Of Regina Woolf talking about if she had a three guineas, to which causes she would give these guineas, and it's sort of a take down of the way English society is run um, at the time that she's been in. The second one would be um, George Eliot's Middlemarch. It's a beautiful, beautiful uh, Victorian novel uh, set in a town uh, with an array of characters. And um, again, um, I guess my tendency is to read and enjoy novels that tell me uh, about um, yeah, English society at large, uh, and how certain institutions are run. It's a long book, and um, it's got very interesting characters, and um, yeah, you really identify with them. You love them, you hate them, and once you get into that world, it just carries you through. The shorter one, uh, which again I teach and I love, um, is Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness, which everyone should read. Um, I mean if you're not interested in English society, um, that's also fine, because it's about, um, well, it's one of the set texts, basically, when you want to um, talk about colonialism, because it's about uh, the um, ivory trade in the Congo. And the other claim to fame is that the book was the basis on which the very well-known film Apocalypse Now uh, that's what it's uh, based on. I mean, the, the film is based on the book. So the last two are um, personal favourites, and I don't know if they're for everybody, but I keep pushing them on to other people as well. Uh, the first uh, is John Powell's The Magus, and as the name suggests, it's a very magical book. It's about an English school teacher going to a um, Greek island, and very strange things happen. I, I really, really like that book a lot. Um, again, it's a thick book. Um, but the, the longest one is a book that I have been reading since 2014, I guess. It's a 12 novel series called A Dance to the Music of Time. It's about a, let's say, a group of friends um, and we start to sort of dip into their lives when they're um, in high school, let's say, in, in England. And we follow them uh, through university, through the wall, and uh, through the kind of various publication, um, the music um, industries that they uh, become a part of later in life.